folks, and folks, I want to welcome you to the old corral once again. We're all set for our little song fest, I'm sure, so if you just get your comfortable seat up there on the top rail while we'll try and entertain you here for a few minutes. In fact, I'll call on Dolph again. Snoopy, I see you got a song here ready for us called... <laughs> I right, sure have, Tommy. <laughs> Go along, you. Yes, sir. <laughs> right, Go along. <laughs> I've got a mule, he's such a fool, he never pays no heat. I build a fad and he can kill him, but he goes up to
Storytelling time. Oh, yeah, and old Cupy, old Cupy, uh, singing that uh, about that rumba mule a while ago kind of puts me in the mind of a horse trader. I like to tell you about. You know, there's something about horse trading that makes you get a hold on you stronger than smoking or chewing or playing poker. Not that they don't get a hold of you too, but horse trading gets in your blood, and once it's there, you're gone. One of the slickest, smoothest, and I might add, orneriest of those horse merchants that I ever knowed was a fellow named Powder Davis. He run a sort of a store out at Plummer Gulch, but spent most of his time swapping horses. Well, one year out there, one season, must have been the fall of the year, Plummer Gulch become popular with a bunch of young punchers who, when they got too lively and full of spirits, used to kind of shoot up the town. Nothing mean or angry about it, just for fun. The only trouble was that some of the low characters of the neighborhood, shady hombres that plain-spoken and quick-drawing men sometimes said didn't bother too much about their ownership of cattle, Got to joining in on the shooting spree. When these men of doubtful honesty let fly with six shooters, they wasn't too careful where the bullets went. So the town folks decided to put a stop to it by making an example. And that wasn't very hard to do either, because the fireworks was becoming almost a nightly occurrence, and the town doctor was spending most of his time plugging up the holes in the honest citizens. Well, finally, one hole wouldn't stay plugged, and a man named Lawson Ryan died. Fortunately, though, the shot had been fired by Herman Bannock, an all-round no-good, who should have been hung long before that. Rumor had it that several attempts had been made in other parts of the country to legally terminate Herman's life, but without success. So a warrant was sworn out, and Herman Bannock was brought to trial. When the testimony was in, including Herman's admitting that he had shot Ryan, but explaining that he was not particularly mad at him, that the state lawyer there just asked that Herman be sent to 10 years. And the jury went out to talk it over. Well, right at the start, 11 of them said guilty. But the 12th one, Powder Davis, held out for acquittal, clown that the sentence was too stiff for an accident that a fellow had had while having a little fun. He didn't make no mention, though, that Herman was one of his best customers. Herman always had some horses he wanted to get rid of right away. Well, after a couple of hours, it uh, appeared from certain that Davis wasn't going to give in and that there would be a hung jury. Well, luckily, the foreman was a right smart thinker, and about 30 minutes after he'd done a little whispering to the constable, there was a tapping on the window of the jury room, and old Zeke, he was Powder Davis's hard hand, motioned for his boss. Well, Zeke and Powder had a few minutes of whispered confab, and then Powder returned to the others, and he said, Listen, you fellas, Eleven of you say guilty, and I've held out. Well, I've changed my mind. So let's vote again and get this trial over with a, well, pretty blame fast, if you will. Well, in five minutes uh, after that, a verdict was in, and Herman was sentenced to ten years, which wasn't near enough for his time. After Powder Davis had streaked from the courtroom, the other jurors gathered around the foreman and said, How did you do it? He said, Easy. He, a powder has had an old fireball Mary has been trying to get rid of for months, and I just thought of it. So I just sent word to my cousin Joe to go over and try and buy. I know that was the only thing that would make Davis give in. <laughs> well, that's my story for now. How about a little song, Peter, huh? How about uh, South of Santa Fe? All right, Pappy, coming up. There's a blue sky waiting for me. Beyond the great divide, South of Santa Fe. Got a longing to be riding where the range is thick and wide, South of Santa Fe. And soon I'll be skedaddling through Sage and Chaparral, swaying in the saddle and heading for the home corral. There's a blue-eyed gal awaiting, and I'm heading out her way, south of Santa Fe. Be a cadet, run through Sage and Chaparral, 
for the home grill. There's a blue-eyed gal awaiting, and I'm heading out her way. South on Santa Fe.